Okay, so this would be video three of the using the UDTs, um, using a user-defined user data type. And if, if you recall, the, the last two videos, the first video we showed how we made the UDT, made it for a motion application. Um, using all the motion uh, instructions, we did the advanced uh, version as well. If we wanted to do uh, some more advanced functions, uh, we added some physical uh, devices and we actually linked those up so if you looked in we added a Cercos network we added the Cercos uh, or the actual uh, drives and in the drives I'm sorry in the uh, in the drives we the associated axis we lined them up with the associated axis so uh, if you went up to the uh, ungrouped we did have these grouped in the last two videos, but I ungrouped them because I am using an emulator. So I don't have it actually have any physical hardware, but I wanted to show um, exactly, you know, how to link a, a axis up here in the, the grouped or ungroups uh, to be able to, you know, link it to whatever actual physical device you have. Um, in that instance, we don't have it. it we've taken them out of the grouped axes and because I'm not, I'm not actually going to use those into the uh, application as I, I emulate it. So I am going to be using an emulator 5000, um, our Logix Emulate 5000 chassis. This is version 20. Again, we are still using the uh, enable time synchronization, which is what you're supposed to use for uh, motion. And um, we are, our name is the uh, Motion UDT, so we're picking back up exactly where we left off. Um, version is 20.15 and slot is 1. So um, to get kind of started what I did is I added a uh, virtual axis 1 and virtual axis 2. Um, we have our main program. We still have our main task which is 47 second uh, milliseconds uh, periodic rate and every 40 second, 47 milliseconds it will scan this uh, motion control uh, routine. And in that motion control routine, I, I wrote a basically uh, a simple state logic uh, or basically state logic control to show an implementation of this running. Um, so for the actual code to start the sequence, um, and this is not online right now, so just but to, to kind of explain it, you basically start the sequence. It will start and load a one into here. It will shut down the both axes. When they're shut down, they'll go to state two. If they are shut down, they'll do a shutdown reset. If they're faulted out at that point in time for some odd reason, the virtual axis or any axis would fault out. Uh, you would want to reset it. Um, and we are using keep in keep in mind we are using our UDTs that we made over here in every one of these. So um, in every one of the instructions. So in that point to verify that there's no faults right here and the shutdown um, the axis are not shut down anymore then we index to state 3 and if the virtual axis home push button is pressed then it will home it will issue a home command to the virtual axis which will cut the virtual axis on uh, a virtual axis is you cannot um, issue an on um, so you, you basically uh, during the emulation, you, you basically just want to home it, which will cut it on. At that point in time, if you have a physical uh, device or something of that nature like we do down here in the ungroups, you could home it or you could just simply cut it on and off. Um, and you can, I believe you can cut these off, but you can't. Um, in the emulation, you can't uh, cut it on. So in that axis, um, in that instance right there, we will home them. And when we home them, they'll go to zero. Um, we're not looking for a status of home. We're basically looking for a um, the action status to come on. And what we can do too, um, as well, is we can verify the PC bit came on. Um, so, real quick, what we can do is, and this is what should be done, honestly. If the PC bits came on, so you would want to take both instances of this and you would want to make sure you, you use the PC bit not the IP so the, the process complete bit not the uh, 
in process bit. So that's what the uh, abbreviations basically mean. And you'll see that as you see that the PC bit is on, uh, not the in process or error are, are enabled or done. Done, um, again, you, you kind of want to use the IP or the PC when you're transitioning states. But to kind of go through this a little bit more, as soon as it goes through and all that's complete, it goes to state four. State four will then um, link the uh, virtual access one to version X, or virtual access two uh, via a motion access gear command. And we're using, again, the UDT that we created. As soon as the IP is on, the end process is on to, to make sure that both axes are geared together. And we can use tags for this, but in this instance, we're going to use the IP. Uh, basically, we come down here to state 5. And then at that point, we if a jog command is issued, we're going to jog just number 1. So just the virtual axis 1. When that happens, we're going to jog it at uh, a speed of 10. And we're going to say if it's in process, we're going to go down to 6. Uh, what I did here on, on uh, rung 6 is I AFI'd this, but I wanted to show that the axis position is moving and that the uh, action, axis uh, actual velocity is, is actually going to what we commanded it to up here. So this is just more of a readout for us to, to verify that what I'm saying is happening. And then at that point in state 6 uh, that was issued up here, uh, you hit the stop button, and this, the, it, basically the uh, both both servos will stop. Um, both virtual axes will stop. As soon as both ac virtual axes stop, it goes into state seven. State seven resets to zero. So this this point right here, what we'll do is we'll download, and uh, I'll show you exactly how this, this situation works. And we'll download to slot one. Uh, this will come up with warnings just because I have ungrouped axes. It's not a big deal. It's, they're just warnings. <clears throat> so it, it's basically showing that the hardware down here is not, not physically hooked up. But that's not a big deal because we know it's not hooked up. That's why I had to ungroup it. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and issue um, the start for this. So the, the start motion sequence. It immediately... If you've seen it, it immediately jumped from, it went through uh, state 1, state 2, and then now it's in state 3 waiting on a home command. So it's waiting on the home command. And so now it's at the home command and we basically issued it to a state 4 which can't automatically started the, the uh, gear state. So now that they're geared together, and the gear together, we found that out by the, using the IP. Uh, we transitioned from the 4 to 5 right here on the state command. Now if we jog it, so if you notice down here, the virtual axis 1 and the virtual axis 2 actual position are not moving. The actual velocity is not moving, and that's because we have not issued a command. So if I toggle simply toggle this bit, then what's going to happen is I'm going to jog the virtual axis one and both axes will jog together because they are geared together on the state four up here that we did. So let's go ahead and shoot. Let's, let's show an example of that. And we can immediately toggle that off because it's still going to continue to jog until we issue a stop command. Now, had we had like a MAM or, or something like that, when we can, you know, just move it to a set position, um, but so you can actually see that both axes are actually moving together. They're moving together. Um, and they, again, I have a one to one ratio uh, as far as gearing. Gearing up here, the ratio is one to one. Um, so whatever one is doing, the other is doing. And the velocity is 10. So at this point, we can go down here and stop this. And as soon as we issue a stop, you can see that both axes, and I'm only stopping the virtual axis one. So both axes are stopped. Um, and at that point, they come down here and it issues a zero into the system again. Uh, if we repeat the process, you can see that it jumps through the uh, sequence again. And it comes, up, comes back and that's what resets the uh, jog 
or the um, not sorry the jog but the uh, the gear that's what unlatches the gear so that that un that separates the act uh, virtual axis one and virtual axis two is doing a shutdown now I could just do a shutdown on the bottom layer down here but being that I do the shutdown first and I make sure that the, sh the axis is shut down when they do shut down, I, I issue a reset, and then when they're if they're not faulted out, I issue a fault. Or if they are faulted out, I issue a fault command, a fault reset command. Now at this point, um, they're back um, at state three, and they're waiting on the home position again. So really, all I have to do is hit the home, come back, and what that does is it, it zeroed it out again. And we'll come back and it's geared again, so we know automatically it's geared. Um, it really depends on how fast you have your motion group. So if you look at the course rate update, um, I have two virtual axes, and the virtual axes um, their cell for about one, roughly say about one millisecond. Um, then, say for instance, if we were just using how to time the, the axes, is basically if you're using a standard servo drive you would say 0.5 increments um, but if you're using a virtual axis it's uh, 1.0 uh, milliseconds so basically if if I were to incorporate these two back into this group then it would be an equivalent to 3 which we would go ahead and force to 4 uh, because of the fact that we already have a the card itself the communication card counts as 1 millisecond as well so keep that in mind when you're when you're kind of doing your uh, course rate updates, and um, you know that's basically how you set that up. Uh, so real real quick, I just wanted to show um, the instance of the instance of using all the UDTs and how to make your your programming kind of modular. Um, really, this didn't take very long to put together all the you know just because I'm using the same UDT um, that we created over here. So uh, with that said, um, I'll kind of leave this as a, a rough example of, of basically what we've done. You can see it, it working together. And I'm going to make a, a, another video showing the, the next instance of this, which would be uh, basically showing like a speed change or a dynamic change and a motion axis move as well. So I'll go ahead and uh, on the next video, I'll program them actually as they are. Um, I'll leave this program just like it is, and I'll, I'll program them um, like, it, you know, in the video. So you can kind of see how modular and how quick this stuff goes. Um, you know, that way you, you kind of know that using a UDT is very beneficial, you know, as far as looking at tags, looking at, at your tag structures and stuff like that. You can use any one of these. I mean, we have so many... Uh, that we could choose from in the, the mag commands we have again we have a, a dimensions of eight or ten um, so we're only using one and two because we only have two servos so if you haven't seen the uh, how we created the UDT the basic UDTs and the advanced UDTs um, that's video one um, I'll have that in show notes below um, and then how I program the initial are uh, shown the initial usage of the UDT S yes, video 2 and this is showing up like a live example uh, using an emulated software so using the same principles uh, completely emulated with no hardware whatsoever so real quick I just want to kind of show you that how to program this um, in the, the sequential function of you know basically the best practice as far as you know shutting down first or either checking for a fault first um, not issuing an on until you're off. Um, you don't want to do that. Uh, just keep in mind of that. Just verify that you're, you shut off the axis first, then you issue an on command. That's just the best practice to keep everything in line and not have the instructions error out on you. If you notice when I went through the system, none of these instructions went into an error. Um, it's because we're using them in a sequential function that is very... Um, I would say you, it was it's used as it's intended to be used. So um, real quick, I put that in the show notes below. That way you have an indication of what to look for if you wanted to look at the other videos or just continue on with what we have. So if you have any questions or have any comments, you just put them in the comment section below, and uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Or if you want to see something else or if you have any more ideas, 
then that would be great as well. Um, so again, thank you for uh, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll be putting out another video, uh, and basically showing in that, that next video will be showing the MAM in this state function, and we'll also be showing the uh, the motion dynamic change, so the speed change as well. So I, I kind of like to show that using the same UDT and, and showing you more versatility in the uh, servo, like changing speeds and, and stuff of that nature and dynamics. Okay, so uh, again, I, I thank you for your time and uh, we're right at the 15 minute mark. So I just want to go ahead and cut this off and we'll, we'll do another video on the uh, the other two elements I talked about. Thank you.